overview and scrutiny committee one meeting, which is due, uh, which due to government advice to the public to practice social distancing will be held virtually with committee members and officers accessing the meeting from remote locations. The meeting has been recorded and will be available via the council's website to be viewed subsequently. Uh, please can everyone ensure that all mobile phones are switched off and to silent mode. Uh, members will have received an electronic copy of the agenda on Tuesday, the 8th of June. Um, for the record, an agenda can be viewed on the Council's website. Members and officers will be speaking at various points during the meeting and those speaking may switch their cameras on at that point. But I'd ask that with the exception of myself as chairperson, at all times you keep your cameras and microphones switched off. This will help to minimise background noise and interference and ensure the connection remains as stable as possible. Please do not use your microphone unless I invite you to do so. Officers from scrutiny will be supporting the meeting and will be monitoring the use of microphones throughout the meeting and where necessary will mute those not being used. If any members wish to raise a point or, or question, they should please click on the raise hand button at the top of the Teams meeting, a uh, Teams window, and I'll come to you in turn. Please do not use the instant messenger uh, chat to an, uh, enter any questions or comments. Um, I'll now ask the scrutiny officer to announce the names of the councillors in attendance of this meeting. OK, thank you, Chair. The members of the committee in attendance currently are Councillor Tom Beadle, Councillor John Paul Blundell, Councillor Pam Davis, Councillor Sorrel Dundee, Councillor Tom Gifford, Councillor Cheryl Green, Councillor Gareth Howells, Councillor Mary Hughes, Councillor Martin, Martin Jones and yourself, Chair, Councillor Kay Rowlands. Thank you, Tracy. Um, item one, apologies for absence. I've already received uh, Councillor Tim Thomas, Reverend Canon Edward Evans and Councillor Sturman. Are there any other apologies, Tracy? No, Chair, no additional apologies at this time. Uh, Councillor JP, uh, John Paul Blendell, sorry. I prefer that, Councillor JP. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Jane Gebby, I should say. Yeah. Just to give the apologies for Councillor Bridie Sedgebeer, obviously she's still on uh, maternity. Thank you. Right, and uh, Councillor Gebby is um, running late because we're electric but, and will come on as yeah. soon as she possibly can. Thank you. Thanks very much. OK, so uh, item two, are there any declarations of interest? No, I can't see any hands up. OK, um, item three, I'll ask the scrutiny officer to present the report and I'll call upon members who indicate they wish to speak by clicking the raise hand button in turn. The, the committee is requested to nominate one member of the committee as its corporate parent, uh, parenting champion to represent the committee at meetings of the Cabinet Committee Corporate Parenting Group. Thank you, Chair. Uh, the report begins on page three of the agenda pack. Sorry. Uh, the committee is requested to nominate one member as its corporate parenting champion to represent the committee as an invitee at meetings of the Cabinet Committee Corporate Parenting. Somebody's mic is on. Sorry. Sorry. The role of the corporate parenting champion is to represent their overview and scrutiny committee in discussions regarding items relating to children in care and care leavers. Um, we, sorry, we're asking for the committee to nominate one um, member and previously uh, Councillor Gerby has been nominated from this committee for the last two years. Uh, please can I ask for nominations from members of the committee? Your mic is off chair, sorry. Councillor Howells, please. I'd like to uh, renominate Councillor Gabby, please, uh, Chair. Thank you. And I'll second that, uh, Chair. Thank you. Are there any further nominations? Councillor Gabby it is then. Great. OK, so we'll move on to item four, it, which is the nomination to the Public Service Board Scrutiny Palette, Panel. Excuse me. <coughs> so um, we, we did have, uh, sorry, shall I hand over to Meryl? Thank you, Chair. Uh, so the report is in page, on page seven of the agenda packs the members have. Um, the purpose of this report is to request the committee to nominate one member to sit on the Public Service Board scrutiny panel. Uh, the background to this is the uh, from 1st of April 2016, the Wellbeing of Future Generations Wales Act 2015 introduced statutory public services boards across each local authority area in Wales 
and the statutory scrutiny of the PSB. This authority designated a PSB scrutiny panel, which sits under the remit of the Corporate Overview and Scrutiny Committee for this purpose. The panel will hold up to two meetings a year and make its recommendations to the Corporate uh, Scrutiny Committee for approval before being reported to the Public Service Board. Um, previously, uh, Councillor Ken Watts was nominated from uh, this committee for the previous two years, but of course, uh, Councillor Watts is now uh, moved to uh, Subject Overview and Scrutiny Committee 2. So we're asking for one nomination from members of the committee, please. So we've all already got um, myself, Councillor Spanswick and Councillor Shaw on the committee. So we're just looking for one more person to sit on the committee if uh, any members will come forward. Uh, Councillor Dendy, please. Well, if it's possible to nominate myself, I'd be happy to sit on the Public Service Board scrutiny. Uh, Meryl, do we need a formal nomination? Uh, if we could have a nomination and a seconder, that would be great. Thanks. I'll, I'll nominate Councillor Sorrell Dendy. And Councillor Gifford. Yeah, sorry, my hand was raised to nominate Councillor Dendy, but yeah. OK, that's great. Thank you, Chair. OK, so we're on to item five, um, which is the forward work programme. Um, I'll ask the scrutiny officer to present the report uh, and then if any members who indicate they wish to speak, please raise your hand button. Um, over to you, Meryl. Thank you, Chair. Uh, the report for this is uh, on page, starts on page 11 of the agenda pack for members' uh, information. So the Council's constitution requires that the Corporate Overview Scrutiny Committee develops and implements a forward work programme the Council's constitution also provides for each subject overview and scrutiny committee to propose items for their work programmes, having regard to the Council's corporate priorities, risk framework management, and that the corporate overview and scrutiny committee prioritise and schedule. Forward work programmes need to be manageable to maximise the eff effective use of the limited time and resources of scrutiny committees. It's not possible to include every topic proposed. Successful scrutiny is about looking at the right topic in the right way and members need to be selective while also being able to demonstrate clear arguments for including or excluding topics. Following the approval of the schedule of scrutiny committee meeting dates at the annual council meeting on 19th of May, the standing statutory items, um, for instance, the medium term financial strategy, the uh, twice yearly performance reports, the corporate plan, budget monitoring, etc have been mapped to the appropriate corporate overview and scrutiny committee meetings into a draft forward work program and members who were on the corporate committee would have seen that in the earlier meeting the draft outline forward work program attached as appendix a for this committee has been prepared by scrutiny using a number of different sources including the latest corporate risk assessment the director of business plan previous scrutiny committee forward work programme report topics and minutes, uh, committee member proposed topics, the policy framework, cabinet work programmes, discussions with corporate directors and the performance team regarding the timing of, um, of reporting and performance information. The subject overview and scrutiny committee draft forward work programmes will be reported to the next meeting of corporate overview and scrutiny committee with the feedback from each respective subject or review and scrutiny committee for coordination and oversight of the overall forward work programme. The subject overview and scrutiny committee forward work programmes will be included in a standing report from then on with any feedback on work programmes from each committee held. And obviously they'll still remain on uh, every month that you have a meeting. You'll still have the um, a standing item on your agenda where you look at, review and uh, reprioritise your work programmes as well. So I'll hand back to you, Chair, uh, for members to ask their questions. Thank you very much, Meryl. Um, I've got Councillor, uh, Councillor Green, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, I totally agree with the, the topics that are here. I was just wondering, are we going to do anything, obviously not immediately, but possibly uh, in the next six months or so, 
Are we going to do anything at all to scrutinise exactly how schools cope with this pandemic? Um, because I, I think basically what we're saying is some have coped better than others, and it could be very helpful to identify best practice because we don't know when this sort of thing could hit us again in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Green. I, I appreciate that's probably our most important topic at the moment after after COVID. Um, Meryl? Uh, Chair, I was just going to say that um, I think going forward, a number of the reports will touch on this, but specifically um, there's a report on um, the support from um, the Central South Consortium um, to schools and how that is managed and, and the balancing act between those who need uh, the different levels of um, support needed, etc. And I think the, um, the things that the what Councillor Green has touched on is going to be a part of, of most reports that we receive um, sort of cross cut in, if you like. Um, but if uh, if the committee wishes to put a specific item on the um, group programme, you know, down down the line, um, that, you know, it's up to the committee to propose that. OK, thank you. Thank you, Meryl. Um, Councillor Green, I'm not sure if you're happy, but my well, I would suggest if we wait till the South Consortium meeting, uh, Central South Consortium meeting, and if it doesn't cover it, we'll put it on the agenda because obviously um, the agenda is flexible and we'll, it will progress as we go along. Um, are you happy with that, Councillor Green? Because um, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, basically, I would have thought September was a little soon to have a definitive picture of exactly how schools have coped. And I was looking at it being uh, a follow on to that, possibly early in next year sometime. Yeah, I agree with you. I do yeah. take Meryl's point completely that that's a very important um, report, but I do think that may raise things that we need to revisit a term later. Absolutely. Um, if all, uh, no problem with that, I'm, I'm happy to put that on Meryl, uh, if we can put that on as a future. Not sure where Meryl's gone. Sorry, Chair. I was is, that, is that okay? With my, um, <laughs> Sorry, uh, uh, Cheryl suggested it's September is going to be too soon, so perhaps we could look at it after uh, towards the uh, the beginning of next year. Um, yes, I would. I would say um, perhaps January or, or March. Then, if if Councillor Green is uh, in agreement. And obviously, Chair, that, that'll be the subject of the ongoing monthly meetings that you have with the Absolutely. director about um, uh, what yeah, you want to see in the reports, involved. et cetera. I'll keep yeah, and reporting back. Yes. OK, um, I, Councillor Howells, I think, was next. I, I think uh, Councillor Blundell put his hand oh, up. Councillor Blundell, uh, please. Um, no worry, let me remind you to take my little, little yellow hand down. Right, there we are. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I'm sure everyone's probably seen it all over the news. I'm not sure how this committee could scrutinise, but I think it's something we should do is the everyone's invited uh, lists of schools came out over the weekend and about the number of um, the people, uh, young women and men and boys who've been uh, assaulted or sexually harassed in schools. 91 of those schools were in Wales and there are some in our county borough, which is very worrying. Um, I was just wondering if this committee, is there something that we could look at? It might fall under things like how school governors and the Central South Consortium might be looking at it and also the new curriculum for Wales. Um, but I think it's something that we, we should be looking at because um, these are just the ones we know about. There are probably vastly more and it needs to stop. And how is this council supporting schools in doing that? I think uh, it's a very important topic, one that we should be discussing. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thanks. You. Thank you, Councillor Blendell. Um, yeah, I think, Meryl, if it's because uh, obviously the question here is what, what we'd, we'd like to see within the reports when we go through these uh, these committees and who we'd like to see invited. Mm -hmm. So I think um, if we can include that on the, the three that um, Councillor Blendell's just mentioned, the Central South Consortium, New Curriculum and School Governing to see if it would come in there. I think, Chair, that maybe this is a separate uh, topic and um, uh, if the committee is minded to add it to the work programme today, um, we can discuss with um, the director on the, on the timing of the, the report. Um, 
I'd suggest it's quite an important topic. I quickly um, need to get it. John, uh, Councillor Blendell, do you have any thoughts on the where you'd like it on the agenda? Come in uh, as the, an agenda item on its on its own. I think it is a very important issue. Um, I was just merely offering a suggestion if we couldn't move the the timetable around that it could be looked at those three. But yeah, absolutely, I think it's something we should be looking at, and uh, it it deserves a standalone meeting. I think so. Yeah, I agree okay. with that. Thank you. And, the, and chair, there is room on the work program. Obviously, um, although every meeting has something on there. Um, you know, we would normally not have just one item on each agenda and also, you know, things can be reprioritised. So I, right. I, if the committee are minded to add that item, uh, we can uh, discuss that with the director about how quickly we can get it. Yeah, I think okay. I think that would be ideal if we can find out how, how quickly we can do it and then re return to that on the agenda. Thanks, Meryl. Um, Councillor Howells. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Chair. Yeah, I, I'd like to support uh, what uh, Councillor Blendell says. I think that is a sensible topic to, to cover. The other thing I want to ask a question in relation to Councillor Green's uh, suggestion, which I think is uh, well made and, and I fully support that. Are we, uh, how are we going to ensure that we also get information directly from the schools, not just from the consortium? Because I think you know it's important that uh, the court consortium may have a certain perspective, but I think obviously there are areas of of, of the authority where, where there's uh, uh, you know social deprivation and all that, and the impact of sort of remote learning etc is going to be more probably much be more challenging in those those areas. So I think it's important to ensure that we have some feedback uh, from the schools as well about the challenges they faced as well as from the consortium. And obviously by putting that back, that part back to the early part of uh, next year, I think then we might have an opportunity to have further feedback. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Howells. Um, Meryl, we had, um, I haven't got the agenda in front of me, but the, the quarterly four mentions the school, um, it mentions a sub subject, doesn't it? And I was concerned on the report that there wasn't enough information. So this was one of the things I was going to bring up with the director. I think, um, Chair, um, going back to what Councillor Howells has just said, um, I would uh, remind members that we have on a rota basis um, uh, her teachers and representative pupils from schools attending each um, uh, for each relevant report, and um, and now now that's on a rota basis as well. So we would obviously um, be looking to include those as as invitees, um, which I think would provide the sort of uh, input from the school's point of view as well as the consortium. And obviously the director would be there and the cabinet member. Um, providing the the authorities' view on whether they were happy with um, what was being provided, um, and also so they, we've got like three different views, if you like, um, well four if you if you break up the schools and the pupils. So um, we wouldn't be looking to you know to, to to stop doing that. If anything, we would want to reinforce it and and make it stronger. Right. Okay. So okay, no problem. Um, I don't have any other hands up. Um, oh, Councillor Jones, please. Oh, Councillor Hughes, are you, are you wanted to come in? Um, you're on mute. Sorry, I haven't seen your hand. That's OK. Is that any better? Yes. Ah, actually, my, my point had been raised already, Chair. When Councillor Cheryl Green suggested what she suggested, at that point, uh, I felt it was vital, but it's already been addressed, that school councils, young people participated in those comments was vital uh, that that was why i pressed absolutely thank you okay thank you councillor jones please yeah thank you chair um when we talk about schools all too often topics are driven by members and perhaps officers why don't we extend an invitation out to schools themselves what would they like to look at um, there are lots of uh, main themes and safeguarding being one of those themes. Finance undoubtedly will be another uh, and trying to negotiate the complex issues within communities, mental health, uh, parental support for schools. Uh, I think this is an opportunity for us as a scrutiny committee to say, what would you like us to look at and extend that invitation to them? And perhaps Meryl can do that with the contacts she has with those who do participate in the scrutiny process. 
Thank you, Councillor Jones. Are you, uh, can I just confirm, are you suggesting that we have a meeting just for schools to talk to us about that? I, I well, from where I'm picking up, uh, Chair, is there are lots of issues ongoing. Schools um, not only, of course, provide education, they're at the heart of communities and they pick up most community issues. Uh, for example, parents are under extreme stress in terms of their employment, perhaps most of them being furloughed. Uh, they're having then to get their children back into school. They're never ending confronted by press and media reports of uh, of you know another sort of round of, of, of lockdown, this sort of thing. Uh, and I think really we do have good contacts with schools. It's tried and trusted, it's well established. So, so let's reach out and say, what would you like to have a look at? What discussions would you like to have? Rather than this be driven by members, so at least what we will achieve after that meeting is schools walking away thinking that well, we've made our point and members have given this commitment to support us other than the other way around. Because I get a feeling sometimes schools are under never ending scrutiny. Turn the scrutiny into support. That's the challenge for us. Chair, if I could uh, of course, yeah. in there, um, I would suggest that um, in order to, to start the dialogue, um, we use the, um, the connections we've got with the um, Association of uh, Head Teachers Secondary and Primary, where we get our, our invitees from, and ask them to put it on their agenda and feed back to us um, about the, the you know the top things they would like to see scrutinised and contribute to. Rather, I think you would have more um, input and buy-in from those um, those those schools to do it that way than to have it play out in a committee meeting and then actually um, uh, we can commission the report from the director or whoever and have them attend the meeting as well to participate so I would if that's uh, along the lines of what Councillor Jones is um, presenting. Yeah <clears throat> sorry Meryl we were talking about the extent to excuse me <clears throat> the extent to who we could actually invite to the meetings and whether we should have representatives or um, well, we called them members of the public, but it's not as the wider audience, but that is something we're looking at um, at the moment. Are you happy with that, Councillor Jones? Yeah, great. OK, next I've got Councillor Beadle, please. Yeah, thank, thank you, Chair. It's, it's just a point I want to raise. Uh, as we are referring to uh, uh, the, the report of, of last weekend and the historic abuse that uh, was in our local schools, um, I, th I think it's appropriate that we sort of get the um, director of social services in, especially with the statistics for child protection referrals from schools, especially those that relate to staff. And uh, I, uh, I, I know it's going to be quite a daunting task, but given the longevity uh, of, of this abuse, then I just wondered, uh, because these records are kept substantially for an, an, a number of years, then it's that sort of statistics, statistics, excuse me, statistics that uh, this committee ought to be looking at, because uh, that will give us a clear indicator then of uh, uh, what is actually coming through, because we only determine what hasn't been recorded when we get disclosures at a later date. So I think it's important that we need to know statistics of where we are now, and what you know the re realistically what are the prospects of uh, this sort of level of uh, child protection uh, that, that we got in place being sufficient to meet the needs of our uh, children thank you councillor beadle yeah there's quite a lot of crossover there um meryl is that going to be something we can do with it because that's quite uh, social service or orientated isn't it can can we i think i think there's a crossover here with safeguarding in schools mm. and i think um uh i would i would propose in this instance that um we try and get the data as councillor beadle has uh, requested and circulate that to members um and um and uh, depending on that, then we we map a way forward for how you would like to address that issue. OK, I'm wondering if it was a, a joint committee rather than bringing social services in. I, I should imagine they're going to have an interest in this as well. I think first things first is to get, get, the, get data, the data and it is specifically about safeguarding in schools and and, and then we can proceed with um, uh, when you have more information on an informed basis then. OK. 
Um, are you happy with that, Councillor Beadle? Yes, indeed, Chair. Yeah. I mean, as long as we get the data, then we can uh, we can analyse that data and obviously plan to move forward. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, I have Councillor uh, Mary Hughes, please. Councillor Hughes, did you want to speak? No, I think that may be a hand from before. Um, OK, I've got no further hands. Oh. I've Oh. Have I unmuted now? No, you're unmuted now, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I think my laptop's playing up. I do beg your pardon. That's yeah, okay. I just wanted to support what, what Councillor Martin-Jones said, and I think it's vital to, to include young people in this discussion. Uh, but as Councillor Jones said, to actually, in a way, help them to feel that they are truly in at the start and almost immediately go straight through Lois Sutton who supports the youth councils down to school councils and let it begin with them by asking them what they want included in the scrutiny right from the very start and we go to them they don't come to our meeting do you see what I mean it, yeah we've got it. to include young people in this right from the start okay so, Meryl do you want to come uh, back in there Yes, certainly. Um, so uh, we do go through Lois Sutton for um, right. the uh, representatives from the Youth Council and, and the Sixth Form um, for each report. And they actually have attended and contributed really well uh, to some of our previous uh, reports. Um, so uh, there is that link with Lois Sutton and, and the, um, the young people um, historically and ongoing with this committee. Oh, fantastic. Thank you, Meryl. Um, it's going to be a very short meeting today. I was just um, the, our first item is additional learning need overview. So I'm just wondering whether there's any invitees anybody would like. Perhaps Meryl could go through who we got coming to that meeting and what we've going to have on the report, and whether there's anything else we want included. Thanks, Chair. So um, this uh, item is on the agenda because um, the implementation uh, begins from September. So it's um, a large piece of legislation which takes effect um, this year. Um, the the we, the um, the stand in, if you like, uh, invitees will obviously be the um, the cabinet member, the director, the relevant officers um, from the directorate. The um, we would also do as usual the um, uh, as we mentioned previously about the. Um, representatives from uh, secondary and um, primary schools, heads and pu uh, pupil pupils or representatives from youth councils. Um, it was just whether you wanted anything further uh, and if you wanted anybody further or anything specifically uh, in included in that report. Okay, you a few hands. Sorry. Um, if my list is working properly, I've got uh, Councillor Mary Hughes first. No, no, I'm not. Nope. Uh, sorry. Oh, I, can you pop your, I think you've still got your hand up. Uh, it's flashing up on my screen. Um, Councillor Martin Jones, please. Yeah, th thank you, Chair. And this is the difficulty, of course, with, with virtual meetings like this. Um, if you would permit me to just go back to the safeguarding uh, issue that we we discussed. I think Councillor John Blundell and Councillor Beadle make very good points about two individual type scenarios that fall within the umbrella of safeguarding. But what I would like us to do, if we could, is to review the corporate response to safeguarding. That is to say, when a complaint is made in a school, for example, how is that then processed through the corporate business? So it goes from the school, it goes to the authority, and what partners play a role in each part of that process? And then who actually signs off that particular complaint, whether or not that complaint goes to uh, a criminal process or whether that complaint is dealt with at management level? And of course, what is important and what the Brintig incident, I think, suggests is, who then identifies the link to other incidents? Uh, and, and I think as a co as a scrutiny committee, we can look at those processes and how those processes are effective. And more importantly, going back to the print take scenario, what lessons can we learn in relation to not picking up the linked incidents? 
Thank if you, they Amy. exist. I mean, I, I'm sitting here suggesting this, having very, very little knowledge of what has gone on in the background. But what this does present to us is that if we did have a, another situation where a school was subject to a, a series of incidents, is how they're linked, how they're managed and how they're dealt with. And how do we ensure that that process is linked to issues of dissatisfaction, complaints by the public, and how are we dealing with that? So what I'm in, in, in a roundabout way, Chair, what I'm trying to suggest is that we use examples of Brintig and what John Blundell, Councillor Blundell has been suggesting to us, but we look at the bigger corporate issue and how the corporate business kicks in and supports those. Thank you, Thank you Councillor Jones. That's taking it back to education quite nicely, hasn't it? So great. OK, did you get all that, Meryl? Chair, I just wanted to make sure that Councillors Blundell and Beadle are happy that that be um, sort of uh, put into one item, then, if you like. Um, Councillor Beadle, please. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I, th I, th I think this is a big issue and uh, what worries me after reading the report and uh, it's uh, it, it, it made na national news as well is the fact that um, we could actually find ourselves now with further disclosures. I mean, the, that, it, that seems to be the commonality with, uh, with with these type of things because once historic uh, disclosures I've, uh, I've, I've been made public, then there seem to be lots coming forward, as, as you well know, you know, that uh, for everything has gone in the past, as soon as there's a disclosure started, an investigation, then that investigation is ongoing on because of uh, more and more disclosures. And I think we need to be mindful of, uh, of, of that. I do fully support, I mean, that uh, th this issue uh, would probably take up a whole meeting. Uh, you know, so that uh, it's, it's important that we get to grips with this because uh, we, 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 want, we want to plan for the future. And uh, as Councillor John says, it, it, it is about uh, uh, supporting our system and, and ensuring that our safeguarding is fit for purpose. Thank you, Councillor Beadle. Yeah, it certainly does seem to, it may go over two meetings by the looks on this. It's hugely important. Um, Councillor Blendell, please. Yes, thank you, Chair. I I feel we, we, we are going to have to put it into one meeting to discuss it all, as Councillor Jones suggests. Um, although I just hope it doesn't get lost, but that'll be down to us members, making sure that the, the uh, issues don't get lost in such a big topic as it is. But uh, it's not why I put my hand up originally. My hand went up um, about the ALN uh, overview. Obviously, this committee had it first. We looked at it first back in 2017, and then SOC 2 took over from it pretty much after that. Uh, I was just uh, obviously, I'm assuming all the minutes are online, uh, but can all those um, uh, recommendations that were made by SOC 2 be made available to SOC 1 so we don't rehash old ground? Um, that's all I wanted to say. I, I know she, uh, Councillor Greens was the chair, so I'm sure she probably has. Informa more information on that. Thank you, Jack. Uh, Councillor Green's got her hands up, so it'd be a good time to bring you in, please, uh, Councillor Green. Uh, thank you, Jack. Yeah, I agree with uh, Councillor Blundell. Actually, it, it would be, um, I think, a good idea to send every member of this committee the recommendations that were made in order for them to follow up what was taken up, what was not, and what situation we, is, we are in at this moment in time. What, what I put my hand up for, though, is um, and forgive me if I missed it, and Meryl did re refer to it, but I'd like to ha have the view of uh, an experienced ARN teacher to give us what what uh, what their input to this would be. Um, I think they're the ones who are directly involved with the children, and I would very much like to ask the question as to uh, this this um, this overview what they want from it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Green. Uh, Meryl, can you come back in, please? Yes, Chair, thanks. Um, on the first point, yes, no problem. We'll recirculate. As you say, uh, committees have been refreshed and items have moved. Um, on the second point, Councillor Green raises, um, yes, an experienced ALN teacher. We'll, um, we'll get the invitation for that as well. Thank you very much. Did you want to come back, Cheryl? Well, your hand's still raised. Uh, no, that's absolutely fine. I kept it up in case I did want to come back, but I will lower it now. Thank you. Um, 
I have L Morris. Forgive me for not knowing your full name as a new chair. Oh, hi, Lindsay. Sorry. Hello. Uh, hi, sorry. Sorry, it's just somebody coming in the office as well. Um, yeah, I think my point may already be mentioned as well. Just going back to what um, Councillor Jones was saying about um, how things are monitored in like a wider school area with any complaints or anything like that might be worth um, looking at as well. Different schools seem to use different systems for recording things as well. I mean, I've worked in two secondary schools um, and we've both used different systems for recording. It might be worth seeing if there is a county wide well, I know a couple of the schools in Regent use the My Concern one, um, uh, but I don't think all of them do as well. So if we're talking about monitoring or um, tracking complaints and things then as well, uh, that might be something worth looking at as well or asking head teachers about as well. Um, and then I also wanted to make the point as well that um, Councillor Green raised as well about needing an ALN coin. If we're looking at any ALN reform as well, that, that's absolutely vital because they are the ones that are going to be implementing it in the schools as well. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Beadle, did you want to come back in? Yeah, thank you, Chair. The, the point I was going to make had just been made by uh, by Councillor Green and by uh, by Lindsay Morris. It because when the invite list for the uh, ALN review that uh, he did mention heads from primary and secondary, but they're supporting the fact that uh, we, we need the ALN course from. Uh, perhaps additional uh, to, to the heads uh, from pr primary and secondary. We also need a link course from primary and secondary, not 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 just the head teachers, because uh, I, I know that there was concerns uh, around this issue and um, governors expressed their concerns as a point of um, possibly going into um, uh, it, 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 into uh, in, in, into legal matters because because the way that the bill is actually put out, and it's very difficult then for uh, for, for governors to actually put their hand up and say yes, I'm going to, I want to be associated with uh, uh, with the ALN, uh, especially given the Im implications of the bill. So it it would be a good uh, a, a good scope for us to get the ed teachers and the uh, uh, and, and the ALN course from both primary and secondary. But that was a point that's all chair. Thank you. OK, Chair, I've noted that. That's great. I think we've got quite a lot there. Um, I have no other hands. Um, I think we've got two major import, uh, important views there. Um, or, or, sorry, subjects there, the uh, ALN, which is coming next. And if you can speak to Lindsay Merrill about when we can get uh, to grips with um, the everyone's, inv everyone's Invited issue, I probably wouldn't subject it as that. But um, I think members are quite clearly very strongly passionate about that and uh, it needs to come forward as soon as we can. Um, if everyone's OK with that, I've got no more hands. OK, Chair, and obviously I'll put it in the agenda for the meeting with uh, the Chair and yourself as well. So Thank everyone. you very much. OK, so if there's nobody else, there's the final uh, thing on the agenda is urgent items and there no, are no urgent items. So I'd like to thank everybody for coming. Uh, I think it's been a great meeting and uh, I will see you soon. Thanks, Chair. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.